Greetings and welcome to our and Sister Unity YouTube channel. And a special welcome back to our OEOS tribe. In today's video, we'll be <laughs> you drink that damn tea. <laughs> Greetings, and welcome to the Origins of Serenity YouTube channel. And a special welcome back to our OEOS tribe. In today's video, we will be kicking off a new series called Tea Therapy. And basically what that is, is from time to time, we'll get on here and we'll have our tea with us. And we'll just have random conversations. Um, if you're new to the channel, usually our videos are a bit more structured. When we come on, we already know we want, what we want to talk about. We know the key points that we want to hit. But in this video, we have no idea what we're going to talk about. Um, but we, flow out. Right. <laughs> we thought that it would be a good idea since we both love to drink tea. And actually, it's something that I'm wanting to get back into um that i kind of fell off on for a few weeks now so in my tea i actually have ashwagandha damiana crystallized ginger maca root and a few other things so and this is one of my favorite tea mugs and in this tea i got some rosemary and mugworth so yeah so basically um this is something that we will be doing randomly um throughout the duration of our channel um, so if you all want to join in at times, get your tea, sit down and kind of listen to us have like a random conversation, you're more than welcome. So one of the things that I do know for sure I want to ask you is what was your 20s like? My 20s? Your 20s like. <laughs> What you talking about? Now that is, a, that's, that's actually not random for me because that <laughs> is something that I knew that I wanted to ask him, but 20s, like, how can I put it? Appropriate. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to get us kicked off YouTube. <laughs> Spill a fee on that one. <laughs> um, my 20s were actually interesting. It was around the time where I was beginning to have a better grasp of things when coming mm -hmm. out of that childhood phase and then going into the whole adulthood. As far as, you know, having the responsibilities of jobs, the whole nine to five thing, as far as what you want to pursue as far as a career. But at the same time, I was also more so focused on my spiritual growth. So even in my 20s, I was working on myself spiritually. But at that time, man, I was a young Thundercat. This is really <laughs> I'm gonna put it to you like that, man. What do you mean by young Thundercat? I be uh, I was a line up for real. Like I was he, out there. he don't mean that he was out there dipping and dabbing with several Doing different the females because people no. will automatically think like no, no, no. I was wild. I was always doing something as far as some sort of CrossFit, some, some something dealing with obstacle courses, anything active. To get out of the well, You know what I'm saying? I was, I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like, I was, I was full of energy. With it. But I was mature with it, exactly. I was very mature at my age, especially in my 20s and whatnot. But uh, yeah, in my 20s, I was observing more than anything. I was observing a whole lot that was happening around me as far as also how is it, how is it affecting me. Um, from certain situations that I put myself through or life just put along my path to people that I came across paths with. There was a lot that I endured in my 20s, but I would definitely say it was a lot of learning. Indeed. If you could go back to your 20s, right. would you? If I can go back, yeah. You would? I would. It was a lot. It'd be a lot that I would tell myself. I probably would go yeah. back to give myself advice based off of what I know now but I don't think that I would go back to my 20s not because I had a bad experience I mean of course I had good and bad experiences right. but I just wouldn't I wouldn't go back to my 20s and I, I honestly don't know if it's just based off of me knowing what I did not know in my 20s 
that's why I say if it was to give myself advice, I would go back to my 20s. But just to give my 20-year-old self some advice, then dip back to my 30s. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. But I would say my 20s, I was, I definitely, I was mature in a sense of I was responsible. Mm -hmm. Listening to stories you told me about your 20s, I wasn't as mature as you were. <laughs> But as far as going to school, um, once I got responsibility of my own as far as paying rent, car note, all of that, I was very responsible with that. But as far as um, as far as things that I wish that I would have been mature in at the time that probably would have well not probably but would have benefited me more in my thirties. I do wish that I was mature in certain areas, more so speaking of like spirituality right. and understanding that, which I'm still young, but understanding at the time that I'm young and I don't have to, um, I can live life. It's okay at times to live life day by day. Right, right. Um, so I wish I would have implemented that more in my 20s, but. Okay. Well, let's see. What question? Do I have in store for you? Okay. So what is something now that you realize in your thirties that has played a significant part, not necessarily in your growth, but <clears throat> something that you wish you would have had all the way back when you came into this realm? <clears throat> like lit, just literally inner knowledge of this particular trait, ability, whatever it be understanding that i'm here for a purpose and it not just being something that we say because you hear people say you know i'm here for a purpose but i don't think that people fully understand what that means until you actually um consciously embark on that path of figuring out what your purpose is and i don't like to say purpose like we have one purpose i feel like there are several different um purposes that actually combine to equal up to our whole full purpose or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I wish that, um, because I know some kids, even as a kid, they know that they're here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. I feel like you were like that. Mm -hmm. um, but me, I more so was more caught up in the day-to-day -day life, um, caught up in the, the stress and stuff that they put on us when it comes to life. So I wish that back then I truly had an understanding that a purpose surpasses any of this stuff that they created for us in this world. That's true. And I think that if I would have, um, that would have been something that I fully understood, um, things would have been different. But at the same time, I wouldn't, I, I see it's like I'm caught in between because it's like I would go back and give my 20 year old self um, advice, but then it's like, everything played out to get me to this moment yeah, exactly so um, everything happened for a reason leading yeah. up to this very moment so what do i want to ask you hmm Hmm, what do I want to ask you? <laughs> the way you just sit in your seat. <laughs> um, okay. It'd be funny if it was empty. It'd be like they fried. Right. <laughs> Bro, I got nothing in the cup, man. Oh, we had alcohol with me. <laughs> Um you know what that may be an idea though. We're not like how can I put we have a little taste of something from time to time, but maybe one day getting like some wine mm -hmm. and coming on here and having like a glass of wine and <laughs> his tolerance is actually well obviously is um you have a higher tolerance than me. But I'll probably have to have me like a half a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. well. <laughs> it just depends on the brain. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I did want to ask you is, um, and dang it, I had it right before we started talking about that. Um, 
Okay. So I know that you told me before that at some point you started to, um, I don't like to use the word, well, no, I'm not going to go there because then it's like you may get too much. It's kind of, okay. What, what's your spiritual path? Mm -hmm. What's one thing? And the reason I bring up like your twenties, because wasn't it like you don't get me wrong. You, everyone has always been spiritual. But as far as you fully tapping into it, I know you were spiritual as a kid, but I mean, being able to have that freedom to really just go deep with your spirituality would have more so been your 20s, right? No, I wish because I was so obligated to so many things that I was involved in Absolutely. that was either a self-obligation or something that was hindering me and I didn't know. So because of that, there was a lot of my energy that was depleted in areas that shouldn't have been depleted, and it should have been utilized in a more beneficial way towards self while helping others, but knowing how that energy was being transferred and whatnot. So yeah, there was a lot in my 20s that was definitely of an interference that kept me from seeing what needed to be seen. I see. But... I still stay true to who and what I am, which is the very reason why I made it this far in my 30s when it comes to my spiritual growth and journey. Okay, so I guess the question would be, um, what is it when you started going deeper with your spirituality? Mm -hmm. What is it that has changed from then until now? You know, like, it's like a thing of, we like, okay, especially when we first start getting into something, it's like, in our mind, in that moment, mm -hmm. we just figured it out. But then, as the more and more we go on our path, or go on that path, we start to realize, okay, I kind of view this differently than what I did mm -hmm. um, initially. And this was something that I thought that was, like, absolute. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. Can't touch on that because that mm -mm. <laughs> uh, stuff that I will research mm. as far as some I went I went deep in certain things that I was interested in as far as going to the source I wasn't too caught up on the messenger so per, so see. to say but the message and if I really resonated with a many of messages that came from this particular individual then I would you know. Mm. I would research as far as certain things that they would talk about, but I can't talk about that. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as mm, I'm trying to see, I would have to say. When it comes to who and what I am. Okay. Yeah, it, it was deeper than what I realized. Way deeper than what I realized. Like, I was seeing it from a very minute place yeah. when it was, when it should have been projecting something way more massive. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And as for you, if you could. If you could literally go in the past, teleport, and tell yourself in the 20s a particular thing, and it could only be one thing, what would it be? That everything is seasonal. Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, don't get so caught up in what's happening in that particular time in my life. To whereas I'm so engulfed in that, mm -hmm. till I don't realize that at some point this has to change. Because yeah, everything is a cycle. So at some point it has to change. So don't let myself get so wrapped up into it until I'm drained. And I didn't have to be drained because at some point it was going to change anyway. Mm -hmm. The solution was going to come. So it's like in my 30s, now I'm just starting to, at times when things come up, I have to remind myself of that. Um, so that's one thing that I would tell myself. And I think that if I could go back and tell myself that, 
that would have saved me a lot of setbacks and, and, and heartaches and all of that that I went through in my 20s. But all of my 20s wasn't bad. Right. Like, I was happy that I got to um, be able to go out with friends, um, finish school, um, live on my own, be responsible, um, not really being, having responsibility, but not the responsibility of, and this is no knock to anybody that had kids in their 20s or that have kids in their 20s or even in their teenage years, but I feel like because I didn't have that and I didn't have a husband, which I am very grateful to have my husband. I don't want nobody thinking I'm reminiscing on, but reminiscing in a sense of I want to go back, but I'm, I'm happy that I didn't have all of that because I feel like I got to enjoy my 20s as much as I possibly could, um, which is why now, um, all of that is not a problem for me. I don't feel overwhelmed because I feel like I got to enjoy that phase of my life in my 20s. And now in my 30s, this is exactly where I want to be. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything or that I have to question what it would be like. Right. So, but yeah, I just wanted to say that because I don't want it to make it seem like my 20s was, right, right. Yeah, was all bad. So what would you, how were you like in high school? <laughs> we actually went to high school together, but I'm like two grades. I was two grades yeah. ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah, I was very reserved. I just stayed to myself. Very quiet. I was in my own little world. Yeah. You? Quiet amongst those that I didn't know, but those that I did know, of course, I was more open. Um... I was not focused <laughs> on my schoolwork, but I still got through um, um, high school with a B average. So. <laughs> Thank you, Monisha. <laughs> but not as focused as, well, because of how I view the school system, I won't say how I should be. Um, but I would say I was, like I said, quiet amongst those that I didn't know, but open around those that I did know. Mm -hmm. um, I would not go back to my high school years because I did not like school. But the kicker is when I started college, I never wanted to miss a day of college. Um, I was always studying and um, I actually enjoyed college or whatnot, but high school was a bit different. School for me was rough anyway because I never liked school. I wouldn't go back to my high. The only thing I probably would go back to with high school is um, not knowing what paying a bill is. <laughs> That's the only thing I would revisit is not knowing what paying a bill is. Look, I'm going to kill it to that. And I was just thinking the other day when I was out running errands, and it was a random thought. I was like, the real MVPs are... Um, high school students and the reason I say that is because they're literally confined to a building for what eight seven and a half to eight hours a day or whatnot um you're surrounded by all of these kids and these adults with different personalities while you're trying to come into your own personality so you got all of these influences you have all of this stress to make this grade um to do this, to do that. Some of them have part-time jobs. Some of them have um, issues at home. So I'm like, those are the real MVPs. People can say adults. Adults go through a lot, but we're more, we should be more mature yeah. than a teenage child. So they have a lot on them. So. And this generation is definitely different from the last. Yeah. That, yeah. So. Even back when we were in school. Right. I, that's enough. I couldn't go to high school. No. <laughs> I'll be homeschooling myself, bro. I'll be in a tree. I'll be books. skipping. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped my senior. The senioritis is, is, is real. I don't know if they still use that term. So it's been a minute since I've been in high school. But um, freshman through junior year, I went like I was supposed to. Senior year, I think it was the it was being anxious to get out of school, period. But um, I think now, if I was in high school, I would skip all the time. I, 
<laughs> my mama and them would just have to be mad at me because I would not. Oh, the stuff that they, like, if you think about the pressures we had plus the influences that they have now, like you expect, like at least when we were teenagers, for those that didn't, I mean, we did go to school with those that had a lot of responsibility on them for their age. But now it's like they're expected to be, to oh, stay in a child's place, but then you also putting them in the place of an adult. When you think about all the exposure that they get exposed to nowadays. So, no, I definitely would not. And the sad part when it comes to that is the elders. Those who are meant to, you know, be their compass or trying right. to find their own compass, they're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't have that that moral support right. and guidance and showing them, like, this is what reality is and this is what reality was when I was coming up. Yeah. But there's a lot of things that I've acquired along my way that I can share, you know, and, um, express to you in a way to where you know it's coming from a genuine sense of I want to make sure that you don't go through what I went through. All right. You don't endure the same mistakes that I endure. You don't have to suffer the way that I suffered. Right. If there's certain things that I see along your path, I want to, you know, pull your coattail and I want you to be able to know what that means when I point out certain things. Yeah. So it's like mm -hmm. they don't have that when it comes to you know actually wanting and willing seeking the help yeah. and having that and that and how can i put it that um that view of that elder the child lacks respect mm -hmm. and people can say oh it's because the child is disrespectful but sometimes you gotta as an adult you gotta ask yourself what perception have you given off to that child mm -hmm. as far as why they don't respect you mm -hmm. or would not so that is true it's like um, I feel like with this generation, like they've kind of been let down. Yep. If you think about it, I, now one thing I can say is that we're at a point now to whereas you have a lot of people waking up. Um, you have yeah, you have a lot of people waking up. You have a lot of people starting to see stuff for what it is. So it's like this generation has been let down, but at the same time, there's still room and opportunity. For, um, I don't feel like you can right or wrong, but for us, it's not too late yeah. for the generation after us to be helped right. or whatnot. So I think that right now, if kids are actually paying attention, then what we're going through now, which we won't um, really go into detail about, um, if kids pay attention, they can really benefit um, by paying attention and carry that into their future and they can really like set themselves up to be really good when it comes to them fulfilling their purpose because I think we're at a point right now where people are realizing that life is bigger than the mundane stuff mm -hmm. that we've been fo that we've been forced to focus on or whatnot so and what she's speaking on is that awareness right so without saying too much mm -hmm. we're saying a lot with that very word. So, and as I've said before, you know what that word means to you. Right. So, but yeah, I agree. So, is there anything else you want to add to? No, uh -huh. I'm trying to think if I have something else to add to. <laughs> okay, I do have something to ask you. Um,. Because I know when we met in 2015, you had, well, before we met, you started growing your hair out, right? And I am I feel that to ask this because yes. we both have our hair out. Yes, yes. So I remember when I met you that first day, you were, t I think you mentioned how you were growing your hair out. Yeah, I believe, it. yeah, it was around that time when I realized that some of the things that I was utilizing, even though they were natural, they weren't actually natural, they natural, they had chemicals in. So, of course, the trial and error, I realized there was a lot of damage that I was putting towards my hair. So, from that, I had a, I had to do a lot of repairing when it yeah. came to, you know, you getting that hair. natural growth. Exactly. So, yeah. So, with it being a thing of, as a kid, you always had your hair cut, right? Yeah. Being a teenager also. Mm -hmm. So, 
remember the other day when I was saying how um, I know for me when I cut my hair, um, you feel like you feel different. You feel free. Some people you feel good, which I have. I've always been very scissor happy with my hair. Um, I'm just not starting to stay out my hair with scissors except when I'm cutting my split ends. But I think it's because it's a liberating feeling. But then I'm realizing it's also a liberating feeling to just let my hair be, to just let it grow. So, with that being said, when you started um, growing your hair out, how did you feel, not on a level of how did you feel about how you looked, yeah. but how did it, like, what did it spark in you? <laughs> when I first uh, mentioned that, I mm-hmm. wanted to, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> The downloads and the frequencies were more into, like, my antenna was definitely um, amplified when it came to receiving certain things and seeing what I needed to see. And I realized that it's it's an extension of what I am and who I am. So when you first decided to grow your hair, Mm -hmm. um... Was it something that you have been processing doing over time, or was it just like a spur of the moment thing? Like, okay, I'm gonna go get my hair cut. Never mm-hmm. mind. I think I'm gonna chill, and then maybe kept putting it off and it grew. Or were you like one day it was just like I'm not cutting my hair no more. I'm not cutting it no more. So it was just like a oh okay. <laughs> yeah, but I made up in my mind that I'm not cutting it no more. Okay. Yeah. I um. I told you this story, but my natural hair came about. Um, at first, I've always been relaxed. I think from the time I was, mom, I'm not gonna throw you <laughs> the natural hair community coming from mom. But I will say this: I had, um, I was, in, I was well into my twenties when I um, first, when I went natural, when I was no longer putting relaxers in my head. So at the time I had like a shortcut. Um, I forget. It was like at the, uh, the only celebrity I could really think about at the time where I don't know what you call it, but it was like short on this side and like curly, uh, making good. I don't know if you remember when she had oh, shaved yeah, in the yeah, uh, other yeah. celebrities had it, but that's the one that I can that's really just coming to mind. Mm-hmm. So at the time I had had my hair like that for a few months and I came home from work. And at the time, I won't, I won't throw out, I don't like to throw out where I worked at because then I don't want, I I wasn't, no, no shade to strippers or anything, but I wasn't a stripper or anything like that. But um, at the time I had a very stressful job, but just know that I did casework at the time. And so when I came home, I was actually in the bathroom, uh, washing my face, taking off my makeup, um, getting ready to shower. And I was supposed to be wrapping my hair up. The next thing I knew, I was in the scissors. I mean, I was in the um, the mirror with scissors in my hand. And I had cut my hair. And mind you, I was just wow. thinking, okay, that weekend I'm going to get a relaxer. All I know is that when I realized it, it was too late. And I had already cut my hair off. So, no, I had just got a relaxer mm-hmm. like two weeks prior. So, <laughs> so when I cut my hair off, like you could see scalp or whatnot. But, um... I remember feeling like free, like it was almost as if, if my relaxed hair and no shade to anybody that's relaxed, I feel like do what you feel comfortable doing with your, your own hair. But, um, I felt like if my relaxed hair was a weight, like a weight had literally been lifted off my shoulders. Um, I didn't know what to do with my natural hair because at the time I didn't watch, I didn't know natural hair videos existed on YouTube or whatnot, so I had no reference point. I just knew that I felt free when it came to my hair or whatnot, but yeah. I was rocking, I won't say a fade because I did not <laughs> cut it into a fade, but <laughs> just know that imagine um, two weeks after a perm, usually for my hair back then, it would still be kind of like straight at the roots. So, because I had to cut off all the relaxed hair. And it wasn't so much that I realized that I cut it off once I cut all my hair off. It's just that once I came to and realized I was cutting my hair, like, I knew I had to finish the job. I see what you're saying. So, but yeah. 
So, any more questions? Or I still got a bunch of tea in mine. <laughs> because you have one cup of tea. I put two cups in mine. Uh, yeah. All righty. So we thank y'all for tuning in. As always, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you're notified when we post content. And that's also a way for you to be a part of our OEOS tribe. Also, like this video if I haven't said like. Um, share this video and also comment below um, your thoughts on, I guess since one of the major topics was our 20s, Comment below about um, some experiences you had in your 20s, or if you're in your 20s, comment below some things that you're going through now. Um, and as always, we thank y'all for tuning in. We thank you to the new subscribers. We thank you to everybody that tune in from week to week. And this will be a series that we will continue on our um, channel, but it'll be like sporadic. So mm -hmm. sometimes we'll be on here together doing the um, tea therapy and sometimes mm -hmm. we'll be on here separate because if you're new to the channel, um, we also do um, videos separately. Right. So we will see y'all next time. Stay lifted.